Doomsday Clock number two. Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'd love to tell you who's uh, doing what. If if you're unfamiliar enough with, with these two names that you think Gary Frank might be writing that Jeff Johns doing the art, then. <laughs> I mean, John's John's did start off his career wanting to be an artist when he was like thirteen, uh, so which is funny because I, I would love to see that sometime. I mean, maybe he's alright as an artist, but I'm glad he didn't go down that path just because. Oh, me too. He's I mean, he's my favorite writer, so you know, and and then when you team him with one of my favorite, like this is probably my favorite creative team. I know Wade and Somni get a lot of love from from other people, but John's and Frank have never let me down. Uh, picking off yeah. where we left uh, issue one with Rorschach, Ozymandias, uh, Marionette, and Mime, I is, is that his name? And the Mime. And the yeah. Mime. Yeah. And not Harley, not Joker, as not, I refer to them. Yeah, not, not Punch and not Jill, or Julie. Yeah, that one too. Uh, so we, we get like a flashback of them, like the, the mission where they got caught and went to prison. We actually get a glimpse oh. of Manhattan in this time period, who mm-hmm. chooses not to kill them because he senses that she's pregnant, which does yeah. beg the question, did she have the baby, and where is the baby? Yeah. Well, she, I mean, that was her introduction, is that's how Ozymandias got to her, mm. is, you know, dangling that carrot. So, but I just, I love that scene. I, I really like, you know, it, it is the Frank art, because the way that he draws faces. Oh, and yeah. He's so Especially expressions. the panel with uh, Mime putting his head through the window. Yep. I particularly yeah. like that panel. <laughs> Very good panel. Uh, so no, all that intercuts with them getting their costumes back, and it's you know Rorschach's mm-hmm. even questioning like, well, why, why are you giving them their costumes and their makeups? Like, uh, hoping for cooperation, hoping for a yeah. lot. <laughs> uh, so that. But this, this, so, so they get in the, the the old ship and they're leaving. There's actually a missile hitting New York as they're leaving. Yeah. And they, they get some turbulence from said missile. But they're like, no, we're going to this other universe. We're going wherever Manhattan went. And then we cut to we cut to uh, Gotham. And we see that we're not in happy times in Gotham. We see that mm-hmm. people don't trust the Batman as much as they used to. There's, like, you know, protests in the street. And I have to wonder, because obviously we know this is set a year in the future. And I'm thinking of what's going on in Detective right now. I'm like, oh, is, yep. is, that, is that leading to this? Is, is you know, has that been thought out? And... Yeah, so we get this idea of, like, you know, Lucius is like, hey, like, Batman's still useful, but the, the public opinion's not the same. And we have this kind of debate. And it's this, again, it's this idea of the heroes not feeling as heroic as they used to, and the public perception yeah. of them changing, and all those kind of themes. Uh, and obviously, he's, he's doing a Rorschach test <laughs> when we first see him. Which, which I love. And you look at the first two, and you're kind of like, yeah, you can make up what those are. The third one is, is designed deliberately to bring about certain emotions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, in everybody, which kind of undermines the point of a Rorschach test, but I like what they were doing there. They're kind of playing up on that dichotomy between Rorschach and Batman. Yeah, especially the, these flawed heroes that work yeah, the streets. Because later on, when you see the uh, the panel of them like, with his dead mm-hmm. parents in the street, in the alleyway, and then you see the Rorschach test right next to it, showing you the exact yep. image, just like, ah, okay. That's, that's what he yeah, always yeah. sees, essentially. But no, I, I like that. Uh, especially since people always compare Rorschach and Batman. And obviously, we, we're yeah. going to end the issue with them kind of coming together and meeting for the first time. Yeah. Uh, so, no, it was a nice thing. Honestly, though, like, so at one point, he looks up in the sky and the bat signal's there. And then the, the scene continues and they're, they're talking. And at the end of the scene, we get what might be one of the most iconic sequences of panels, I think, I've ever seen in a comic book. Yeah. We, the night owl, like, so you can see the bat signal through the clouds, and the, mm-hmm. the way it's, like, Frank's drawn it, you see it, it's sort of properly going over the clouds, it's very cloudy and sort of, like, almost yeah. bubbly, the way it's drawn, and you just see, the, like, these two lights where the, the bat eyes would be, and the ship flies through the bat signal, it is such a great moment, mm-hmm. and, yeah, so, so they're here, they're here in the DC universe, and they handcuff the, the marionette and the mime, uh, they're bringing the cat... <laughs> <laughs> which, yep. which Rorschach doesn't understand, but Oz is like, "Hey, no, he's he's the compass. Like he he's going to be useful." But yep. they go to the library to like investigate and see, okay, what, what's on with this world? What's going on? And what, what's happening in the world? And they're like, "Oh, some of these characters, these these people are fictional on our earth." And well, let's try and find out what happened. Let's explain to them. Let's find the smart, smartest men in the world. And the two he comes up with, Lex Luthor, of course, and also Bruce Wayne. Now, I think it is a little bit debatable. Who the second one, smart? Two? No, no, no. I think it's debatable if Batman should be the second one because I feel like you've got all these other people on on DC Universe. You know, Mister Terrific. Yeah. You got. Uh, well, Mister Terrific's bag was always he's always the world's third smartest man. 
Oh, like, sure. That was always written on his blurb, which I loved because then it opened for debate who's one, who's two. Because like, I'm just I'm thinking like there's a lot of other scientists and stuff in the DCU, and there's a lot of other. Well, I mean, there, yeah, Doctor Tom Morrow. You yeah, have, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think some of the other uh, Wonder Woman's villain. What's her name? Uh, Veronica uh, Kale. Yeah, she's she's another one that's super smart. So yeah, I mean, but it really drives the point home uh, that. This is always a thread that I always wanted in a comic, and I'm glad that Johns is doing this of hmm. Lex Luther Corp versus Wayne. And Especially since you, you find out earlier on that Lex Corp was trying to buy yeah, uh, Wayne the, Industries. The so board so that's what Lucius is, is talking to Bruce about, and he's kinda like, Well, the board votes no confidence, like there's nothing we can do to stop this takeover. And again And if they get in they're going to have everything, yeah. Bruce. And like, again, you need to stop this. This mirrors the whole idea that the the cynical Lex Luthor mm-hmm. is going to overtake the heroic Batman because, yep. the, because the public opinion and the opinion in this case of the board is changing that they're going to yep. like give in to this like powerful cynic instead. And so, so that theme is mm-hmm. sort of running through uh, yeah. the various plot lines, which is really nice. And But yeah, so, so it's like, okay, so we've got, we got Lex Luthor and Bruce Wayne, so which one do you want to take? We'll split up. So obviously yeah. we have Oz going to Lex because that, we want to see that meeting. We have of Rorschach course. going to Batman because we want to see that meeting. And of course Rorschach, you know, he eats his pancakes, <laughs> the delinquent. But then he, yeah. obviously, he's got his detective skills, so he finds the entrance to the cave, which sets off a sensor, which alerts Batman to his presence. Uh, but what I particularly like, though, about all this stuff is the idea of uh, Rorschach going around the cave, and he's talking about how, wait, this is sick. He's keeping so many trophies. This, this is how Kovacs found all his, his culprits because they, yeah. they they had to hold out of the past. I think it's a very interesting thing for him to compare Batman to all the villains that Rorschach dealt with. Which, and which has always been a thing, though. Like One of the best descriptions I've heard of, of Batman is he's a, a hero that fights the villains like they would. Mm. You know, He uses villain tactics to take down the villains, so of course he keeps trinkets. And at the end of the day, he's still that scared you know, 10-year-old boy and he, he needs these keepsakes to remind him of his mission. And I like looking through these, and, like, there's that suit that's that's forefront, and I can't figure out whose it is. It's the yellow and, and red one. <clears throat> um, it looks like Universo from the, the Legion of Superheroes, who's a villain, but why would that be in the Batcave? That makes no sense. So I'm wondering if this is, like, a John's Easter egg of something to come. It if... may be, yeah. Uh, I mean, if anything, if, if, I mean, I didn't, get, I wouldn't get that reference because I'm not as good in Legion as you are. Of but I think that if I'm looking at it, it looks almost like the, with the you know, without the hat, like kind of like a jester mm-hmm. outfit almost. Yeah, but you look around. There's there's like a, a glass orb around the mask, under the glass. Too. Oh yeah, so yeah, it's that's like, right. Was, that's was this a Mr. Freeze, like from back in the day that I just don't know about? I don't think it's Mister um, Freeze, but I mean, I can I can see right. what you mean with the glass head. Yeah, that's a bit odd. Because because then you look and it looks like fireflies. Uh, flamethrower behind him and yeah, you maybe, have the penguins umbrellas I mean maybe, maybe it's just an old firefly costume I mean I don't, I don't know what yeah. a firefly looked like back in the silver age or whatever yeah. but but yeah so I just you know I look into these things behind because we have the issue in the button of the flash going oh, through the JLA of course yeah. satellite that was just all there and John's never does anything by accident especially with Frank uh, yeah, everything has a meaning so the fact that you know like he said that only monsters keep trophies like these and that, I mean, that's how you can kind of see Batman, you know, and, and my anti-bat days when it was very much more prominent than it is now. Uh, then, yeah, I, I would agree with Rorschach. So they, they, they've got the Lex and uh, or you got Oz- Ozymandias going to Lex's uh, business yeah. and Lex, of course, just rubbing him off. And I particularly enjoy it. You know, we cut away to what Rorschach's doing. We come back. And I love that he's explained, like, and Lex is like, so let me get this straight. you got all these writers and artists to fabricate this, like, giant alien to unite the Earth, and you're surprised it didn't work. If you're the smartest man on your Earth, I'd hate to meet the dumbest. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's always good, you know? Like, I love when Lex gets to be sassy. Oh, he's ultra <laughs> sassy. This is, like, sass to the max. Uh, and of course, yeah, obviously, I'm, I'm enjoying the meeting of these two minds. It's like the way Alex reacts to him, Ozzy Man just trying yeah. to talk to him. Well, it was but, on that fantastic cover that my shop didn't have any of uh, with, with Lex in his boardroom mm. with Ozzy Man his hand on his shoulder. And it's it's not that at all. You know, it's Lex actually going, Well, who the hell are you? What are you doing here? This None of this checks out. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, no, it's interesting. So, uh, obviously, we have a surprise 
guest who shows up at oh. this scene. Uh, and I'm not ready. I don't think it's necessarily really him. No. Uh, I, I I would speculate lots of things. Uh, one, I mean, I don't think it's in his head because Lex also reacts to gunshots. So yeah. some something's physically there doing this, but it appears to be the comedian who talks about how oh, last time comedian came for him, or last time Ozymandias came for him, he wasn't prepared. He was sitting watching TV, but oh, now yeah. he's ready. He's ready to take him on. Which means something's playing off of Ozymandias' memories, mm. right? Because we can assume he's the only one that would have known that. Is you know, Comedian's final minutes were him and Ozymandias. So either this is just a figment of his brain tumor, which I've seen a lot of speculation of, or this is this is Mr. Mr. Oz. Um, that's a slip. Uh, mm. Manhattan. This is his first strike uh, on this because they they speculate that this was the Earth that Manhattan came to, and he's been here a while. So let well, that I, speculation fly. I think it's who, more to speculate at this point. I think they've well, tracked him here. Yeah, that's what I mean. But they he, he they know he's hiding, but they don't know how if he's blended in who he is. Which again, let that that speculation amongst us fly on who he's been hiding as. I, I, I don't, I don't think this is Manhattan. I feel like this is too early, to, and mm-hmm. probably the least interesting way. I, I, honestly, if I have any complaints about this issue, is that this comedian cliffhanger at the end? It just kind of feels a bit like shock value, and you know, next issue it may yeah. not amount to much. And uh, maybe I'm wrong in that. It, it may end up being like a big deal. It just it feels like that's such an obvious cliffhanger to do. Is like, oh, someone who you thought was dead in Watchmen is here in the last page mm-hmm. like it was so obvious that at some point we were going to get a, an issue end like that so I, if anything i'm glad to get out of the way now <laughs> and don't do it again because well, like, of course but yeah, hey, yeah. Uh, but, I, but i like the the bigger cliffhanger that we see the mime and marionette um yeah him using they're... his invisible stuff again he he pulls out an invisible lockpick which apparently works he... because they get out yeah <laughs> so you know we see that we see they're free. They're free in Gotham. They're loose. It'll be interesting to see how Batman reacts to this pair. Uh, you know, given they are kind of similar in some ways to some characters that he's dealt with, and yeah. so on. So that 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 will be curious. And of course, we we have the just the the, the first glimpse of the Batman Rorschach meeting with uh, yep. him being you ate my breakfast. Yes, I did. Yes, it was it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> we know he can't pass up pancakes because I mean he is human, you know. But, I mean, I just love that they were wrapped in foil, left for Bruce by Alfred, like, in the library. <laughs> like, the most random place to leave pancakes. The idea of Batman dancing around the warped justice logic of Rorschach is fascinating to me. I cannot yeah. wait to see how this is tackled next issue. Well, we, we know with Kovacs everything was black and white, and it doesn't seem like that's the way with this new Rorschach. Mm. So even that... that the difference between the two as well you know i mean that, that could that could be one of the the threads for the for the series as a whole is maybe batman kind of like lets rorschach grow a little bit like in kind of yeah. i mean this rorschach i mean not kovacs obviously mm-hmm. but you know maybe yeah. gives him a, a sense of oh there's better ways to do this or something mm-hmm. like that i don't know um yeah and then, and then we get to the back matter, which I thought, did you read all of that? I didn't read all of that. I, I did sort of skim it, okay. and I saw you know the whole idea of the, the Superman theory. Uh, yeah. So th- there's this distrust that's getting spread in the DC universe at this, this time in the timeline where everyone's kind of suspicious because most superheroes, most people with superpowers all seem to be American. Yeah, and why is that? Yeah. I mean, so it, people are starting to theorize that it's like, you know, the government were experimenting and this is all... Yeah. And they get into the origin of Metamorpho, who we know is returning through metal, which mm. is the so the fact that he's showing up here was a surprise to me. They talk about Rex Mason and his whole entire origin is he gets tricked into obtaining this rare Egyptian artifact by his soon to be father in law as a means to get rid of him. And it and it turns him into the elemental man and he can transform it in the element in the human body and you know. But this twists it that Rex Mason and his his father in law were in on it together, and this was the like one of the first attempts to create like a, a government not a government sponsored but like a a corporate superhero. Yeah, that was under you know lease to him. It's it's, um, it's fascinating because at one point Batman in the book uh, or Bruce more specifically uh, yeah. even mentions like interference from Russia 
uh, and and Markovia. And Markovia. He says, "Oh, and yeah. w- w- what's going on with them?" And that makes me wonder, like, if we're getting a little bit political here, like, is this oh. implying that some of these stories about you know this this Superman? Because it would make sense that this this theory comes from outside the country. That other people yeah. went, "Hey, you're doing something weird because you have all these mm-hmm. superpowered people." Like, it makes sense yeah. that that comes from elsewhere. And and it's very also Cold War eighties. Mm. Uh, while while being contemporary, which I feel like there's a, a modern Cold War going on right now that's under the current, so the Johns can tap into that. I mean, that's, that's his era of comics. I mean, he loves Firestorm, and Firestorm's main villain was a Russian guy, you know? Uh, and and then you have the whole Rocket Reds of that era, which were you know, the USSR's response to the Justice League, you know? So... I think that just and to add Markovia there and just Batman and the Outsiders, you know, it's just it's weird that this is all coming up in the back matter. And there's also a reference to Alan Scott with a a, mm. a green fire in in the picture. A bizarre green fire destroys all American steel factory. Which of course is exciting because if we're teasing JSA members, obviously we had Johnny Lighton already. We had had him since the start yeah. of Rebirth. Uh, it's like okay. Now we've referenced Alan Scott. Well, we've seen Jay Garrick in the Speed Force. Uh huh. You know, we're building and some of the we... prominent members here. We're teasing a lot of them now. Yeah. So there's just a whole lot there, and I like that they're using the Watchmen method there mm. of explaining the story fuller in these text articles. But uh, I, I enjoyed this issue a lot. I, I think again, uh, I was just again excited. Everything was kind of tickling, like like building up the the main the marionette, the you coming through the bat signal to Gotham, actually being in the world and looking for him. Which and then yeah. of course the final big question I, that you alluded to a couple of minutes ago is, oh. if Manhattan is hiding and pretending to be someone else, who is he? And have we been yeah. seeing him over the past year and a half? Yeah. <sighs> Before reading the Captain Adam mini that I thought was going to be, you know, important, I would have said, oh, he's definitely Captain Adam. It's the most familiar to his own origin. And, I mean, that would be paying lip service to the original character because that's who mm. Dr. Manhattan was based on. That said, that mini series did absolutely nothing to clarify anything with Captain Adam. It would actually be out of character had it been Dr. Manhattan the whole time. So... I, I don't know. I, I feel if he shows up, it's it's going to have to be a shocker. You know? And I just don't know where, though. I don't know who he could have been in the past, in the present. I mean, I wonder if we find out he's been someone fairly prominent this whole time, and the real version of that person is... Uh, you know, is is somewhere else. You know, you know, kind of like yeah. how someone was, like Tim was trapped in Ozzy's prison. Displaced. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I wonder if we get something like that, or... <sighs> Who, who would make some sense if it's if some list? Like, I'm, I'm trying to think, is there anyone who's typically in the JSA who's still around? And maybe we could find out, oh, that's really Manhattan, and then the real version is actually someone who remembers the JSA. I, I don't know, I'm just trying to... Yeah, I'm... Or not even just the that, JSA that specifically, just, raised. I mean, could could be Legion, but I don't think there's any Legion people running around. No, oh. no, that that has more to do with Emra in, in Arkham, and I think we'll get to that yeah. soon. But though those seeds were planted in the button, so I'm also trying to go back in, into the button and him seeing or, or or Zoom saying that he saw God and there was that blue aura. Mm. I feel now that was a red herring. And because if he had seen God, then is is Manhattan actually not on this earth? He's just influencing this earth through that. Like there's so many possibilities. I can't. I mean, even, I mean he could be doing oh. both. He could be here in disguise, yeah. but also influencing it. Yeah, what if he's Sassy Alfred? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, uh, um, uh, I don't know. I, I think I think obviously the speculation yeah. is going to remember. I, I think with every passing issue of this, we're maybe going to have more ideas and yeah. thoughts as to who it That's, may be. My my only negative takeaway out of this was I want issue three right now. I don't want to, yeah. have to wait another month. That that is fair. Like, obviously, the art's fantastic. We talked about the, the art a lot more in the last issue, mm-hmm. but just worth mentioning. Obviously, yeah. I mentioned a couple of specific moments, but for the most part, it's just phenomenal from start to finish. Yeah. I, I have no complaints. Layout's the other great. thing too, what was was John's and, and Frank the nostalgia panel, where where Marionette talks about Veet's perfume called Nostalgia, and she talks about how everybody loves it, and once they get a whiff, they can't get enough. <laughs> and if that's not the meta commentary on this entire, you know, what's been going on with Rebirth, I don't know what is. 
Mm-hmm. Like I thought that was just a smart and the way that it breaks down over the panels and you're talking about his other stuff. His newer stuff's not as good. Nothing compares to nostalgia. I was just like, man, John's is cutting loose in a way that I haven't seen, and I've read this a lot of what he's done. Yeah, no, uh, it's exciting. As DC fans, it's exciting. like I said, my only real criticism would maybe be that the the, the comedian cliffhanger is just kind of an obvious thing that they had mm-hmm. to do at some point. So it, it, it's sort of oh. landing. Okay, I'm not mad at it, but like I was kind of yeah. expecting this, and it just feels like something that was going to happen. <laughs>